Welcome to AHSC TV's Weekly Roundup, I'm Josefina Bergsten. This week's program will focus on the work of the Asian Alliance Against Torture and Ill Treatment meeting hosted by the Asian Human Rights Commission. The AHSC, with the cooperation of Dignity, hosted a meeting of parliamentarians and human rights leaders from across Asia. The annual AAATI meeting was held from October 10 to the 14th in Hong Kong. The theme of this year's meeting was to determine the reasons why torture remains endemic in their countries, the close connection between corruption and torture, and the responsibility of politicians in creating change. The participants used a comparative approach examining and discussing the situation in their respective countries. Today we bring you excerpts from some of the presentations from the meeting. Vito mentioned his book The Logos Effect. I highly recommend that you read it. Um, Gary Hogan is a former uh, State Department official in the U.S. Uh, the other guy, Boutros, I believe is still a serving uh, official for the State Department in the U.S. And they've taken a very interesting perspective. I'd say, first of all, they're, they're saying things that Mr. Basil Fernando has been saying for years. Namely, that the policing system in Asia, most countries in Asia, not only doesn't help the poor when they have problems, but it hurts the poor. In that, very often the police take bribes from people, indiscriminately arrest people and accuse them of crimes, again, looking for money or just for a way to solve a, an issue. And you also have the reality of them teaming up with gangsters or corrupt politicians to beat people up and even kill people. Um, and this is done on a systemic basis. And the point I think we want to bring for discussion to this meeting is what needs to be changed. And I think the simple answer is political will. I think the question that we have to ask in terms of the overall uh, purpose of this particular meeting is that where does the parliamentarians, the legislature, people who are in the legislature comes into the question say, in terms of your uh, uh, resource allocations, is there at least among those who are more uh, uh, conscious politicians, when you look at your budget is presented into the, uh, into the year, will somebody question, what is your public uh, justice budget? Will somebody question and ask, what is the uh, budget that has been allocated to a uh, 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 public justice system. Now, uh, uh, this word public justice system is deliberately used. You will find that throughout this book, uh, uh, you know, that's the center of the argument is around that. So, by public justice system, we mean all the services, the judiciary, the prosecutions, the, uh, the police, and other related uh, uh, agencies and also the prison systems. Now, if these are to function, they, they need budget. Now, is there any likelihood of this budget coming if there is no discussion? And if, if this budget is not to come, actually our discussion about whether ending torture is virtually a, a fruitless discussion. I mean, torture is denounced by the executive and also by the legislature uh, as an acceptable form of crime control, even though the practice is otherwise. So actually, at the executive level as well as at the legislative level, it's denounced, it's looked down on, even though we find that the practice is otherwise. And the reason I'm talking about attitude here is because the question is very complex. So as a moral concept, right, uh, torture and ill-treatment are basically considered morally repugnant. Now, however, right, the issue is uh, Sri Lanka, as you know, has gone through a conflict and uh, we have had long periods of emergency rule. Uh, we have had to combat terrorism, right? And the general public have come to, in a sense, accept certain levels of violence, certain levels of torture, under those circumstances. So if you talk to people, right, 
uh, you can see that there is an attitudinal shift. Uh, so if you say, uh, you know, zero tolerance for torture, it's really not what the average person has in their mind anymore. So there is a certain level of acceptance there. Uh, you know, and, and how do you actually change that? Uh, likewise, the corrupt, this torture uh, is widespread, and every in uh, India too is India is not an exception at all. Uh, even uh, general education is not an exception because we we came from Kerala. Uh, literally, we speak from Kerala is having a hundred percentage of literacy. So though we have a hundred percentage of literacy, general education, number of torture, police torture, number of custodial deaths are reporting every year, every week. We have we have got a number of reporting from there. Uh, uh, so uh, then uh, the, how the, in the people also, even though there is a liter literally high, the, there is a belief that without torture, proper investigation cannot be taken. So torture is used as a, a accepted method of investigation. Though. But what happened now after uh, 15 years of active politics, when I go to the younger people and I tell them, that you know, the young people should come and join. It is the new minds, the new fresh uh, people should come and join. The first thing they ask me, you have been in politics for the last 15 years. What have you achieved? What, where have you gone and what could you do? Uh, what change could you bring? And I actually don't have an answer to that. We are probably, Bangladesh is probably going through the toughest time, the most difficult time in the history of our country. We are losing, uh, Right now, we don't have democracy at all. There's, there's, we have an elected government, but the election where only 5% people took place. The human rights organizations are there. The activists are there. The NGOs, the non-government non organizations, organizations are there. They will uh, uh, work and they will create pressure on the government. All these things are there. But one thing is missing, what I, could, what I could feel, that there is no process by which we can start influencing on the youth of the, uh, of the people, of the mass. We have to get the mass, the people, involved in the process. Otherwise, nothing is going to work. It is the people who is going to bring the change in the end of the day. It is, it is very apparent that the policing and the security structure is prone to influence by powerful vested interest groups in society. These groups have tendency to influence and prevail upon policing system for their own interest and benefit. They are using policing and security infrastructure to keep common people under subjugation and maintain circumstances that suits them best. Such circumstances coupled with the lack of political attention towards the matter has so far prevented any reformation in the, in the policing and the security structures in the developing countries. Whether the root problem is the corruption in judiciary, in police, in the ministers, and the parliamentarians, or whether the root problem is the defective electoral laws, whether the root problem is the non-implementation of the existing laws. Really, torture has, has uh, uh, or still is, a weapon that is being used by those who are in power. And uh, really, because it is uh, those who are in power, the authorities, that have the capability to uh, really commit inhuman, cruel, and degrading punishment to the people, and not the other way around. The state of impunity in our country, uh, in the use of torture by state security forces, cannot occur without the tacit approval or backing by government officials. The military and police institutions cannot implement torture or the use of it if the government have the political will to stop it. It's not enough that you have to pass a law, but you have to really implement the law. Thus, it is inherent upon governments, you know, for that matter, uh, I suppose, government run by uh, the elite who wanted to protect their hold and to power to allow the use of torture by its security port uh, forces just to maintain the status quo. To prevent dissent, and to prevent uh, people from rising, the ruling elite in our country will allow the military to use torture and other forms of punishment in order to instill 
fear, institutional fear among our people. Thus, while the passage of the Anti-Torture Act of 2009 has been uh, welcomed, it has been commented on by international human rights groups, the implementation and strong determination of the government to curb human rights violations in the form of torture remains to be seen. The subject is very important uh, because this is directly related to government and peoples. Torture is a very important. I accept in my country also use of torture in treatment is wide separate like many other countries of Asia. I would like to inform you that you had, we had introduced anti-torture bill in the last parliament. But unfortunately, it did not pass because the parliament get dissolved on 27 May 2012. When I was in, in uh, interrogation uh, in prison, I met a lot of police because I was, uh, I was in the police custody, custody for eight months. So I met a lot of police officers and other ranks as well. So their mindset, they don't know how to do the interrogation. Their mindset is just to beat the people to get the answer and to be confessed. And they will torture the people. They, their mindset is if they don't do this, the people won't say any, uh, the right things. Even though the, the prisoners or the criminal saying the right things, they don't believe that. So this is their mindset. I think we need to change. So how do, how do we change? We need to educate them. The police department is under Ministry of Home Affairs. So all the high officers of police department are from the military. And the prison authorities, they are from military officers as well. They are very high rank officer like colonel or brigadier general. They became the uh, high official or high officer in the poli police department and in the prison authority as well. And this goes to another department as well. Uh, every, in every department, mostly every, mostly every department in our country, the high officials are from military. Torture and ill-treatment on the one side and corruption on the other have typically been addressed academically and in terms of policy as two separate domains of knowledge and practice with corruption usually cited as an example of bad governance and uh, torture and ill-treatment as examples of gross human rights violations. So the extent to which corruption contributes to torture and ill-treatment has not often been explained or defined in very clear and precise terms. Um, and this is a real shame, really, because um, the role of uh, well, yeah, the role of corruption and um, in the perpetuation of torture is something that could be addressed by these bodies under Article 2 of both the CAT Convention and the ICCPR, as has been mentioned by Basil in um, the uh, article that was shared with us in the, um, in the booklet that was put together. Um, but yet neither body has chosen to elaborate on this. Uh, however, there is some good news. Um, that nexus between corruption and torture has been elaborated a bit by the Subcommittee on the Prevention of Torture, which is the, body, the UN body responsible for overseeing the optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture. Um, in its annual report this year, which was uh, issued in March, um, the, uh, the SPT included for the first time a section on corruption and torture and ill-treatment Significant not only because it's highly informative and gives us for the first time a, a sense of where the UN is on its thinking on this, um, but also that the SPT even chose to engage on this question when it has been so often dealt with as separate domains. The participants also had the opportunity to meet with members of the Hong Kong government and the legal profession who provided insight into Hong Kong's judicial system, which is widely regarded as competent and independent by Hong Kong people as well as internationally. Here is Hong Kong barrister Y.L. Chung speaking on judicial independence. Article 85 of the, of the basic law guarantees the, uh, the independence of the judiciary, but what does it actually mean by judicial independence? Now, this is, this is something that we will have to uh, uh, consider carefully. So, so that, that's the, the, 
the institutional side of, of the judiciary. Now, as to, as, to how it, as to how it works, now, um, um, of course, I begin by saying that uh, independent judiciary um, is to uphold the rule of law and safeguards individual free rights and freedom. And that is, of course, the cornerstone of our, of our society because everyone is equal before the law. And uh, the impartiality of the judiciary is the best guarantee that uh, the citizens' dispute can be uh, resolved fairly and impartially. Even disputes between the, a citizen and the government can be uh, resolved in court by a judge who acts without fear or favor. And that is what we call by uh, judicial independence. Judicial independence is not a privilege. We call it a responsibility. Um, uh, um, it's, a, it's a responsibility for, for a judge to act impartially um, without um, fear and favor and demonstrating the, the highest level of integrity. So in other words, judicial independence uh, encompasses the value of impartiality and integrity. This is, uh, this is how, 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 we, how we look at that. But of course, um, over the years, as I observe uh, the life of our judiciary, uh, one will immediately see that um, we remain a credible sector in the city, not just because it's a professional sector, but because um, it, has get, it, it has won uh, the respect and credibility uh, from the members of the public here. At the end of the meeting, the various lawmakers and experts in attendance released the joint conclusion, reading, the widespread torture and ill-treatment that prevails in most of the Asian countries is a direct result of the political system and the legal system. Eradication of torture cannot be done merely by education of the police, the military and other security forces who usually engage in committing acts of torture. For the full statement, please log on to www.humanrights.asia. That is all for HSC TV's weekly roundup. Thank you for watching and see you next week.